In this House of Logic video, we're going to have a look at how you can scale out the monitoring of Windows servers in Grafana. So I've already got a Grafana environment set up and I've demonstrated how to do this on a previous video which I'll link to in the description. Um, and what we actually have here is a Windows um, exporter installed on a particular server and uh, that's connected up to Prometheus and Prometheus is then being used to provide the data on these graphs. So if I just go in here quickly, you can see we have a Prometheus data source. Now over on our Docker instance, <coughs> excuse me, where we run our environment, um, what we have is a Prometheus configuration um, that's got a number of scrape jobs and we've actually got multiple ones on this environment. So we've got a ping exporter which we're not going to be using, um, we've got a node um, exporter which is for Linux servers and we've got a Windows exporter and this is talking to server 192.168.5.143. So it's collecting data from the Windows exporter that's running on there. And what we want to do is we want to make it such that we can collect this um, from more than one host. Now, um, what we've been doing, or what we are going to do, is this particular host, as an example, um, so these are all running in Proxmox at the moment, and this host has been turned into an Active Directory domain controller. You don't have to use this for your particular monitoring source, it's just being done for, uh, for, for an example. We also have a second server. Um, which is running on 192.168.5.177 and that one is the one that we have already joined into Active Directory and we are going to um, set up the Windows exporter service um, so that it is published from one machine to another. So on our domain controller we will open up the Windows services menu uh, quickest way, let's go through that and we can see underneath services If we drop down to W for Windows, um, we should see Windows Exporter, which is probably hiding from me. There it is, Windows underscore Exporter. So that's already running, and we're able to connect and get the metrics, as I said, directly from there. So what, what the challenge is here is to make sure that you can get this installed and set up across multiple servers without having to go through an awful lot of effort. So to do this, what you need to do, or certainly one of the options for doing so, um, is to use Active Directory itself to do it. So if I quickly demonstrate on the other machine that we are a domain joined member. Sorry, hang on one sec. So our local server here. So it's on our demo domain.local, as is this machine here. So demo domain.local. I'm not going to go through Active Directory setup. There's plenty of information about there out there about how to do that. So we are a we are a member server. Our AD member is a member server. On the domain controller, um, what you need to do is you need to go and create a share. So we'll go into the root of our C drive and we're going to go and create a folder and we're going to call it software. Okay, with that set, we're now going to go into properties and to sharing, and we're going to share it, and we're going to share it to everyone, and we're going to add a permission to read for everyone. Okay, and that's it, share that, and we can hit done. So demo DC1 and software. Within software, oops, what we need to do is we need to go and copy in the MSI installer. So we'll take that one and then we'll go back into the software directory and we can then paste that in there. Now, the rest of the work can mostly be done here. So we can actually now go into uh, our Active Directory um, users and computers. And first of all, we're going to have a look to see what we've got. So at the moment, within computers, you'll find we've got the AD member one server. Now, we don't want to apply this policy to absolutely everything in our environment. Obviously, we've only got a couple of servers in this environment, so it wouldn't really matter. Um, but in some environments, this might not be what you want to do. So create yourself an organizational unit. So we're going to call this monitoring. And then we're going to hit OK. Now we can go back to computers, and we're going to add this server into the monitoring OU. OK, and with that in place, what we need to do is we then need to go and create a group policy. So going into Active Directory, Group Policy Management, and within our domain, it will tell us about the different, there we go, there's our domain, and we can expand that out, and we'll make that a bit bigger, and pull that across. 
So we have a domain policy, we have some um, group policy objects, and what we can do is we can actually go and create a domain policy. In fact, I was expecting to see our new um, OU in there. Oh no, there it is, sorry, half blind. Um, okay, so we will go and create a GPO in this domain. In fact, we'll do it on the monitoring OU itself. Okay, so we're gonna call it Prometheus monitoring and then within there what we need to do is we need to go and find the uh, group policy objects and then we can go right click that and edit it so we are going to go underneath um, policies and then enter software settings and then to software installation and we'll add a new package which we're going to go and browse to. Now the important thing here is to make sure that we browse to the network share location. So we're going to go to demo DC one slash software. So not going to the C drive software location and we can then choose the Windows exporter package and we're going to resign it. So we're going to hit OK. So that's now added that and associated that with the organizational unit. There is an additional thing that you need to do for the Windows exporter. So if you've gone through the setup manually, there's actually an option um, around setting up a firewall exception. If you don't set the firewall exception up, you're very likely to fall foul of this. So I believe that's under Windows settings, so bear with me one moment, and under security settings, and that's going to be under Windows Defender Firewall. And what we can do there, there we go, is we can, I believe we can expand it. There we are. And we can set an inbound rule. So we'll go to new rule. And this will open up the very familiar wizard. And we're going to use the port number. And the port number is port 9182 for the Windows exporter on TCP. So you click through to the next page for uh, protocol and ports. Choose TCP, choose 9182. And we're going to allow the connection. So we can then basically allow it for all domain, private and public um, environments uh, or network types, I should say. Um, and we're going to give it a name of Prometheus Exporter Inbound. And that will allow basically anything um, or to come in to that particular um, address. Obviously you can tighten this up if you've got particular um, network ranges you want to restrict it to, then that is entirely doable. So with that set, now we can already see that we've got the Prometheus uh, policy on the group policy um, objects. Underneath here under monitoring, we can see we've got that linked there. And underneath active directory in uh, using computers, we can see that the AD member one server is linked there. So going all the way back over to our existing AD member server, which is lurking there, and I'll just minimize this one now. What we can then do is then we would either expect to pick up this package on a reboot, or if we want to speed things up, what you can do is you can open up PowerShell or a command line window, and you can do gp update forward slash force. And that will update the group policy. And then in a moment, we should be prompted about doing a reboot. In fact, this is complaining about the clock sync. That's, I think, because I did some snapshots on here. Um, what we will do, we'll give it one more go, and then we'll reboot the machine. I may have to pause the video while I sort out the clock syncs here. I wasn't aware of this before I started recording. Yeah, that seems to be persisting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, reboot the machines and um, and see if that comes good. Um, one other thing to mention on the group policy assignment is if you have anything uh, as, a, as an advanced configuration, so under the Windows exporter, um, what you will see is that you will actually find you have, um, if you've got a particular configuration that you need, you can actually find the configuration file under path to executable here on the Windows server. So the default execute uh, default config uh, for the Windows exporter is this config.yaml file. 
Um, and you could do an advanced config where you are replicating that via the network share as well. But we're not going to go into detail on that on this video. Let me know in the comments if that's something of interest. Um, OK, I'm going to quickly pause the video and um, reboot the machines and see if all comes good. OK, so the servers have rebooted. And what we can then see is we should be able to go and have a look at the group policy. So. What it should do is if you try and run group policy force, it will come back clean and say you don't need to do it. So if we do GP update, helps us to spell it correctly, uh, forward slash force. Then we'll have a look at that. It says it's completed successfully. Okay, so that's good. That means that there's actually nothing to apply. Um, and we should be able to then open the services window. Quickway services.msc. And under services, what we will now expect to see is the Windows exporter, which, because of the capitalization and the underscore, seems to wind up at the bottom. So that's installed and running, which is great news. So it, the package assignment has worked. Um, if we now go into our web browser, uh, which we'll find there. What we can hopefully do is go and talk to the exporter and go and try and get some metrics from it. So if we do 5.177.9182 metrics, we have metrics. That's great. So that's installed and that's presenting out metrics. And the firewall exception has to be working because we can see them. Um, so our final step um, is to go back to Prometheus. Now, what you would need to do, so if you are doing this at scale and you want to make sure that you've multi uh, you're actually monitoring multiple targets, is underneath the configuration for the, uh, the actual targets, you can now pop in any other IP addresses of any other exporter instances. So 9182, again there, so 192.168.5.143 and 5.177. We'll save that, exit. Then we're going to have to go and uh, I think can we do restart? Let's try that. That has restarted. So what we will expect to see within a moment or two is we should get some extra data pop up in our um, our actual dashboard here. So let's pop over here and refresh. Hang on, let's save the dashboard just in case and refresh. Aha, we have a second instance. That is the last five minutes. It's only one data point. Um, but nevertheless, if we give that a moment, I will quickly pause the video and we'll get some slightly better stats. Okay, there we are. We have um, a few more statistics uh, showing up there, some more data points um, that show us the amount of uh, network bytes sent and received. So not very many on the uh, 177 server. Um, but nevertheless, um, there is uh, there's something there. Um, and that basically wraps it up. Um, as mentioned earlier in the video, if you wanted to do anything um, more advanced, um, you would actually go into Active Directory and um, probably assign um, or get it to copy across a config file as part of that installation. Um, and uh, that would certainly be the way that I would suggest um, proceeding. There is all sorts of options with Active Directory as to how you could scale this out, um, including scripted installations, etc., etc. But this is a basic how you get yourself up and running as quickly as possible video. Um, so thanks very much for watching. I hope that's been of use. Um, please like and subscribe if that's your kind of thing. Otherwise, catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.